Hello there, Naps. My name is Jocelyn. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I think it would be a great day to talk about apologies, how to do that, what we do wrong, the ways to make people feel all warm and fuzzy with how you take responsibility for things that you've done. I'm not a professional. All right. I don't have a plan for this makeup. I'm gonna start off with some Mary Kay primer. I love that my hair is getting a little longer. It means that I can play with it more, but it also definitely means today is a day where I'm gonna mess it up a little bit so that I keep it mostly out of my face. Plop your primer on. Grab your foundation, be it liquid or powder. I am using liquid, which means that I will have a powder step following it. If you do not wish to do two steps, one step can be achieved through powder foundation. Whitened Beauty Blender. And go ahead, give it a little squirt and uh, give yourself a little dab in a couple spots. Yeah, cause that's how we're, oop, that's how we're rolling today. Let's talk apologies. We do it all the time. Some people do it significantly more than others, but what makes an effective apology? It's actually a lot more complicated than people think, but very simple at the same time. Conundrum, indeed. The reason it's difficult is because it's so hard to replicate things that would lead to a successful apology in a lab setting. Basically, it's unethical, according to this one article that I read from BBC, which will be linked down below. They had tried to set up studies to get people to apologize, to see what was effective, what wasn't. But the problem was that they needed instances where people felt grievously wronged in order to really test what made an acceptable apology and what didn't. And they found that oftentimes if they just tried hypothetical situations like, what if Bob ran over your foot with his car? Or if they tried to pull from memory, it didn't really give an accurate detail of, oh yeah, I would accept the apology or I wouldn't. Just because instances, like how the person says it, what they do to make up for it, does make a difference. Basically, the devil is in the details. All right, now that your foundation is all on and beautiful and glorious, you're gonna get some setting powder. I'm gonna be using the Boing Under Eye Setting Powder. By the way, my foundation was the Tarte Double Duty Face Tape Foundation in light sand. All products are gonna be linked below. Go ahead, get your brush, get your little powder puff, whatever you wanna use for you is fine by me. Oh, why does my nose always get itchy whenever I start doing foundations? Help. So there was a psychologist at Kobe University, and I'm gonna horribly mispronounce this name, Otisubu. And this psychologist did a whole bunch of intensive research on the science of apologies, what makes a good one, how to do it effectively, what failings can happen while trying to apologize, and he wrote a bunch of papers on it. He mentioned the importance of like a retribution gift. The person who is apologizing must give something to the person who wants the apology or who deserves the apology. The purpose is not to enrich the recipient, but rather to pain the giver. So appropriate apology would not be giving somebody 20 bucks if 20 bucks is nothing to you. Um, something might, that might be more effective would be not going to an event that makes you happy or something that basically prevents you from wanting to do it again and having to pay that like apology price. There was an example they used, I think it was a famous singer in Japan that had an extramarital affair with somebody and her apology to her fans was literally shaving her head. So, and she had like really long hair. This wasn't just like, you know, she had a bob and she shaved her head. No, this was like, she cut off like years, years of growth. So that would obviously signal that like, it's important to her that her fans understand that she knows that she did something wrong and that she is atoning for it and that their forgiveness means a lot to her. So things like that, are what he said was effective. Let's go ahead and get our contour. I'm gonna use the NARS Laguna, little itty bitty. By the way, if anybody has ideas for Halloween, let me know, because I am willing to play. But there was one year that I did a bunch of Halloween looks, mostly on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. 
and I struggled a lot. I did 30 days of, of makeup and there are some days that definitely were not my best makeup days. I had time during work to kind of fiddle around with makeup if I wanted. Maybe just a little. I probably shouldn't be using the brush for this. I heard some people do this too, where they go right under there and it's supposed to like do things. Get out your favorite blush as well. I'm gonna use the Mary Kay Shy Blush because I got two blushes and this is the one I'm using. Don't judge me. Focus on your own life. Why are you picking on me? The other key thing that, oh gosh, I have to say his name again, Otishubu, Otisubu, that that psychologist at Kobe University said was the apology is supposed to signal the importance of the relationship, the value of the relationship, and signal that there were lessons learned and convincing the other party that the steps would not be repeated, or the mistake would not be repeated, right? So you're looking for, I accept blame. I value our relationship enough to try and make it better. And I'm not gonna do it again. Those are the three key tenets to an apology. Keep it in mind as we continue to go forward with it, because we're gonna have a fun little section called Apologies That Are Annoying AF. You all know what they are already, I bet. Go ahead, take your guesses. Put down below in the comments what your least favorite apology structures are. Last week, I forgot highlight. I always forget something. I'm trying to get better about it. And then the worst part is, I forget something that I've done many times before, like highlight. Unless I'm purposefully not putting on highlight, I almost always put on highlight. So why that time did I just forget? I know that I'm gonna be using the Tribe by Juvius for eyeshadow. So I'm just gonna look at, so I've got these colors here to work with. So I want to use shade Sparkling for highlight from my Aurora Lights palette by BH Cosmetics, because it's got that kind of orangey tone that I want. And let's get all pretty. Ooh, yeah. Shiny as a baby's butt. Let's break out our Tribe by Juvia's palette. Nope. Let's get our eye primer on, and then maybe I'll distract myself with brows so that I don't miss things again. Ooh, brows and then eye primer. Brows and then eye primer. So I am using Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade to get my tail situation fixed. The American Marketing Association's Journal of Marketing weird name, said that when uh, there is a small transgression that is performed against uh, an individual, that it can be very helpful to start your apology with thank you, actually, instead of going right into the I'm sorry. It raises people's self-esteem, like you're giving them gratitude for stuff that they've done. You're also not throwing out pointless I'm sorry's in there to kind of guilt trip the person into accepting your apology, which I think we all have known people who will say I'm sorry 7,000 times and you feel like they do mean the sorry, but you don't feel like it's really gonna stop them from continuing later. You know what I mean? You know? You know? So a good example is if you're late for a meeting with someone, you might say thank you for your patience instead of, I'm sorry for being late, because it admits that they were very patient in waiting for you. It's nice. It makes you feel like your efforts are being recognized, especially if they're in an instance where something couldn't be helped, like maybe there was a traffic accident. Eyeshadow primer to kind of clean it up a little bit. Probably could have just used actual concealer, but I don't care. But maybe I just care so much that I'm pretending not. Just to clean it up further, I am also going to use Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Mascara to just make sure that my hairs stay in place in the way I want them to. This is shade Ebony along with the Dip Brow. Pomade was also shade Ebony. No, no. There we go. That makes my brows feel a little cleaner. And I only did my like brow bone area, so I'm gonna go ahead and plop my eye primer on the rest of my lid. I want it to not be moving around on my face. You know what I mean? Ooh, should have done this before. Concealer, this guy right here is visible and I don't want him to be right now. There we are. You can come out to breathe later. The color tone isn't, isn't too different, right? Fine. I'm definitely not stalling. Not stalling at all. Why would you suggest such a thing? I can't believe you would suggest such a thing. 
And that's where we get to bad apologies. Segways, yay. Boring. Yeah, Wikipedia has a great thing about non-apologies. Non-apology is probably one of my least favorite things when dealing with people. I'm also going to dip into, see I'm going to dip into sand down here, it's this pretty teal. Yeah. I'm going to go in the crease. I think I'm going to do a cut crease today. I'm feeling a cut crease mood. If you've ever experienced a non-apology, you know how irritating it is. You know. You go through, and it might not have even been a big deal when it started. It might have been fine. It might have just been somebody did something kind of stupid and you're like, hey, that's not cool. But instead of being like, oh, shoot, yeah, you're right, moving on, either you get called out on it, like, what do you mean it's not cool? Like, everything I do is cool. I can't believe you would do that. Are you my friend? Why, why do you think that I would purposely try to hurt you? Stuff like that. Or the distraction tactics are so apparent that it actually makes you focus on it more. Like a complete disregard for what you just said as being like hurtful to you. So you might be like, hey dude, can you just like not throw that cup everywhere? It's my grandmother's china. And you'd be like, hey, do you wanna play this video game instead? Like complete different tangent, right? I feel like more and more hair is falling out of my paintbrush. Okay. I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna blend it. And I'm gonna do it right on the edge. So the good old fashioned non-apology has so many different names for it. It is as old as time and as annoying as your siblings. Besides being known as the non-apology, it is also known as the backhanded apology, the half-assed apology, or the faux apology. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't really heard all of these, but the one that I've heard the most is half-assed. I'm gonna take my little brush brush here. Okay, I'm gonna dip into Coro right here. It is a very pretty highlight shade. If I'm doing a cut crease, I should probably actually cut the crease. So I'm gonna go with my um, Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. Do a little trick. It's supposed to help you find like where you should cut your crease when you have hooded eyes. So you put it on your lid and then you like look up and wherever it touches, yeah, see, is like the high point. And that's where you're supposed to cut your crease so that people can see that you cut, that you have like a crease cut there. As you can see, for me, my crease cut is actually higher than where my crease is. Yeah, there's a good example. The thing about cut creases is you get to fudge around with them a little bit and there's so many good ways to go back and futz and fix it. At a certain point, you have to stop yourself, but you can play with it however much you want to get it right for you. And I think a berry shade would be nice. Do I have any berry shades in this one? I do. Oh, I want well, that matches perfectly. Okay, so I'm also gonna use my NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette, and this one is Ultimate Utopia. And I think I'm gonna use, ooh, I think I'm gonna use this one down here in the corner. As we've talked about before, while I pack this onto that nice crease area, apologies where you don't express remorse and also apologies that you're not taking ownership over are some of the most irritating apologies, at least for me. These apologies are really common when you see political figures specifically trying to apologize, especially to other people. You get a lot of fun half-assed apologies, right? Mm, some lovely examples that Wikipedia helped provide are, I'm sorry you feel that way. You might be taking a slightly remorseful approach, but you're not really taking ownership over the fact that you caused that feeling. You're just saying your feelings are your business and I think you might have caused those. Similarly, the ever-present, I'm sorry, but. I'm so sorry that I ran over your dog, but you really shouldn't have him loose in the yard. Mmm, are you really sorry? Because it doesn't sound like it. I'm gonna go in with some shine too. And I'm gonna bring that nice dark sun color in. Number three on the crappy apologies list is, well, mistakes were made. You're understanding that stuff was done wrong, but again, not taking ownership over the fact that you were the one to make those mistakes. You're also being really vague with what the mistakes are too. 
which kind of makes the other person's experience feel lessened. And you know what? I'm going <laughs> to... Um, I was like, I need a pinky color, and then I went with a reddish color. So I'm going to go in with Corolla in the, that midsection of my lid just to give it a little sparkle because it's so pretty. Another great example of an annoying apology. I apologize if. I apologize if I hurt your feelings. I apologize if you felt that way. The if in there is not owning up to the fact that you did indeed do the thing that they want the apology for. It kind of goes hand in hand with the I apologize if you took it that way. Anytime you put if in there, it takes away from like how genuine it's supposed to feel. I really want to darken up that one section. Does that look weird? Would that be too much color? Maybe. I'm going to use this second shade over here. It's kind of like a gray purple to darken it up even more and kind of take it out a little. I gotta say, besides the color combo, this is pretty similar to my cut crease spilling the tea on, I think it was Market Culture video, which if you haven't seen, go ahead and take a look at it. I'm gonna take a little bit, so I'm gonna try and use basically all the colors in this palette, except for not even close to that, but I'm gonna take this Ormo and I'm gonna go right in this lower lash line inner corner area. This isn't an example, but you're apologizing without trying to heal the relationship. Why are you apologizing? Oh, this orange is real bright. Okay. Significantly brighter than that pinky tone that I used. Also though, explaining the situation without accepting any blame or really uh, admitting that you hurt someone. If you go into great detail about the why behind it, but you don't ever say like, I'm sorry though, what I did was still wrong. You didn't apologize, you just explained your side of it. So when the other person is like, uh, no, you never apologized, you can't be like, no I did, I just explained this whole thing. How do you not understand where I was coming from? And it's like, no, 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 I understand where you were coming from. You explained it for this amount of time, but you never apologized. You never said the words, I'm sorry. You never admitted fault. You never took responsibility. And you never made it sound like you weren't gonna do it again, you know? combination of the things. I'm not a professional. I don't know anything about this. I'm going to clean it up a little though. Basically just going to take the leftover foundation and kind of use it to touch up some of that and then maybe get even more sharp and like really pop that wing. That's the way they do it. Re-get that setting powder out because we don't want creasing. Highlight because I did a lot over top. And now that we have, I'm gonna go back in with that coral color on that inner spot, and I'm just gonna really pack it in there. Okay, I'm gonna use my Milani the Tank Eyeliner and give myself a nice little wing. Gonna do that inner corner point. All right, don't forget also to do your waterline with your preferred eyeliner. I'm gonna use Wet n Wild and Baby's Got Black. Try not to poke myself in the eye. Okay, so I also put on some fake lashes. These are the Lunar Angel Lashes in Starlight. NYX uh, Liquid Suede, and because I can't stop myself from doing ombres right now, I'm also going to use Wet n Wild's uh, Color Icon in Virgo. And this one is in Club Hopper. You ever have one of those moments where it's like you forget how to put on lipstick? Because I did. Concealer's my best friend today, I swear. So it's not quite an ombre because I realized that the Wet n Wild stuff, the color icon, is a gloss. So it's more or less just now glossy versus not glossy, which honestly, I'm okay with. Let's go ahead, take it outside for some full lighting so that you can see a little bit better. There we are. Thanks so much for coming in, you guys. I appreciate you coming back to my channel. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, can you go ahead and click that subscribe button? Don't forget to ding the notification bell to get notified when I post. I post every Thursday, so I hope to see you then. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed what I'm talking about today, and go ahead and drop some comments about what you'd like to see in future episodes. All right, Naps, as always, I'm not a professional. I know nothing when it comes to anything. So if there's any information that you have that I don't have and didn't explain in the video, go ahead and put that in the comments as well. Have a great day. Bye.